Hello everybody. In this video, I want to talk about the topic of actively investing and picking and choosing individual stocks versus just buying an S&P 500 ETF and holding on to it long term. Which has better returns on average and which is the better strategy for regular everyday people overall? Let's read this article. Can regular investors beat the market? We all invest with the hope that one day we won't have to work, but we'll have enough money to live off our investments. The question remains, can a regular investor really beat the market? Do we have what it takes to win over the middleman and institutions that have millions or even billions invested in the market? According to Terence Odian, a finance professor at the University of California, Berkeley's Haas School of Business, many of the mistakes investors make come from a lack of any understanding of the innate disadvantages they face. David and Goliath, can you beat the market? The answer to this question is not an easy one, and the answer generally vary depending on who you ask. By beating the market, we're talking about everyday working Americans who invest to try to get greater capital gains and more returns than the S&P 500. According to one expert, investors may have to give up something in return for higher returns. We all have some larcency in us. We buy securities because we think we know someone or something others don't. I don't think anyone can consistently outperform the S&P 500 without assuming greater than market risk. Okay, and then I want to highlight this part as well, beating the market probabilities. The reality is there will always be a lure to try and beat the market, especially since those who have beat it consistently are revered so highly. Examples are Bill Miller and Peter Lynch, and or are compensated well, hedge fund managers. I think the market can be beaten, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. Best way to describe it, it's possible, but not probable. According to Laura, the average individual investor has little chance of beating the market. So as you can see, that article and many other articles state that for many individual investors actively choosing stocks, you know, picking Amazon, SoFi, Disney, Hood, things like that. In general, most likely you're not going to beat the returns of the S&P 500. And I'm not immune to that. Even myself, if you look at my year to date returns, Year to date, I'm only up 7.41%. But if we look at the S&P 500 ETF like SPY, year to date, 11.96%. So if I did not actively pick individual stocks, if I didn't pick, you know, Amazon, Google, et cetera, et cetera, and I just invested all my money into the SPY ETF, I would have actually made more money this year so far. So I'm no exception. Even someone like me who knows how covered calls work, iron condors, options, margin investing, whatever. I know all this information. However, the reality is for most people, for most regular everyday people, you're going to most likely make really good returns by just investing in the S&P 500 ETF like SPY or VOO any S&P 500 ETF, you're going to get good returns from that. And you're going to beat the returns of most active investors. You could probably beat the returns of me because I'm an active investor. I don't invest in the SPY ETF. I pick and choose individual stocks, right? And I make videos telling you guys all the stocks I invest in, PayPal, Verizon, Starbucks. However, doing it this way, according to the article and many other articles, most likely will not outperform simply investing in an S&P 500 ETF. So one reason why I wanted to make this video to remind people of this is because there are many fake gurus out there selling courses, claiming that they have some sort of secret to consistently being the market and making like 40% a year consistently. And I feel like I have to make 
a video like this to remind people to not fall for those type of scams because realistically it's not sustainable to consistently beat the S&P 500 ETF over and over again year after year for a very long term except for a few investors you know people like Peter Lynch Warren Buffett there's very few investors who are very famous for beating the returns of the S&P 500 over a long period of time however for the most part most everyday normal people you're going to be better off simply buying an S&P 500 ETF and holding on to that for the long term you're going to beat the returns of a lot of investors now another reason I wanted to make this video as a reminder is for me specifically I see a lot of people watching my videos commenting you know and I feel like some people have the wrong idea and you guys get over enthusiastic like you want to learn my secret weapon or you want to learn how I do covered calls and you know margin investing and all this and I have to remind you guys what I'm doing most likely statistically speaking will have worse returns overall than simply investing in S&P 500 ETFs. And this has been statistically proven in many articles, right? The probability is low that active investors like me will outperform S&P 500 ETFs. Now, lastly, you might be wondering, well, if we all know that there's only a small chance of beating the S&P 500, then why do I do it? Well, let me tell you why. Even though I know that there's a small chance that only a small percentage of people can beat the S&P 500 returns, I want to be part of that small percentage. Even though I know it's not probable, I still want to try and beat the returns of the S&P 500. Now, that doesn't mean that I can consistently do it, I already know that, statistically speaking, it's not probable. I know that. However, I feel like, honestly, it's kind of too boring to just invest in the S&P 500 and sit back and do nothing. And especially for YouTube content creation. What content is that if I just say, hey, I'm putting all my money in SPY and then just doing nothing and then the only thing I ever do is put more money in SPY and that's it. That's not really good content for YouTube. So that's another reason as well. And I do make some money from AdSense revenue. So I wanna make it a little bit more interesting than simply holding only SPY and that's it. So I invest in individual stocks. I can make videos on why I think this is bullish, that's bullish, whatever. And I can respond to comments about why I chose this certain strike price, things like that. It makes for better content creation. And not only that, but sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I actually do end up beating the returns of the S&P 500. Not all the time, but for example, in the past year, my portfolio is up 40.86%. If we compare that to the one year chart for spy it's only up 26.42 percent so it depends on which time frame you're looking at right so even though it's not probable over the long term i still want to try to see if i can actually do it but i'm just doing this as a reminder to people don't assume that because someone knows how options work someone knows how margin investing works things like that that doesn't mean that they can consistently beat the S&P 500 returns. If you simply invest in SPY and you just keep on holding on to that long term, most likely you're going to beat the returns of active investors. You'll beat the returns of myself. So this is the best strategy for most people. Statistically speaking, this is the best strategy. Over the long run, you're going to have better returns than most active investors if you simply hold on to S&P 500 ETFs. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to remind you guys that most likely most investors are better off 
simply investing in S&P 500 ETFs and holding on to that for the long term. You're going to beat my returns. Probably you're going to beat most active investors, probably. So I just wanted to remind you guys of that. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Thank you so much. Bye.